Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about lazy propagation in segment 3. If you don't know what segment 3 is, I highly recommend you to watch my another video in segment 3. This video is just about lazy propagation in segment 3. So what is lazy propagation? Lazy propagation is an optimization technique on segment 3 when there are tons and tons of updates in this segment 3. What lazy propagation does is it minimizes the number of operations on the nodes for a segment 3. So here I'm going to take an array of length 8 and using this array as an example I'm going to explain how lazy propagation works. So first I do is I create a minimum segment tree for this array. So this is a minimum segment tree where minus 1 is the minimum from range 0 to 7, minus 1 is minimum of range 0 to 3, 1 is minimum in range 4 to 7 and so on. This is really represented in the form of array but for the simplicity purpose I'm representing it as a tree. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my another video on segment tree. For lazy propagation, we'll need another array of the same size as this segment tree and this is going to store the lazy information. Again, this array is also as a, is a really an array but for the simplicity purpose, I'm representing it as a tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply these four operations and show how lazy propagation works. So our first operation is increment in the range 0 to 3 by 3. So basically saying increment from here till here by 3. So if lazy propagation was not in place, let's see how this would work. So we would come here, 0 to 3 and 0 to 7 have an overlap, so we go in both the directions. 0 to 3 and this 0 to 3 has an overlap so we go in both the directions 0 to 3 has an overlap with this 0 to 1 and then we reach this point so we increment this by 3 so this becomes 2 and then we come here we increment this by 3 so this becomes 5 and then we come here we increment this by 3 so this becomes 7 and this becomes 4 and then we take the minimum of this and this and then we take minimum of this and this and then we come on the right side, 4 to 7 does not overlap with 0 to 3, so we do not change anything here. We go back up here, get the minimum of this, this, and update this value. So as you can see, when the lazy propagation is not in place for any update, we go all the way to the leaf nodes. So next, let's see how it would work when the lazy propagation is actually in place. So let's again do increment 0 to 3 by 3 using lazy propagation. So the thing with lazy propagation is whenever we reach a node either for update or for query first thing we check is are all the values from the past updates being applied and the way to do that is you look into this lazy tree. So for example if I reach this point if the value here is non-zero it means that there are some updates from the last, uh, last operations which have not been applied so we got to apply that first. So let's do increment 0 to 3 by 3 on this tree. So we come to this point. First thing we check is, is this value up to date? And to do that, we come here and this value is 0. So it means that this value is up to date. Then 0 to 3 does not totally overlap 0 to 7. So there's a partial overlap. So we go in both the directions. So we reach here. 0 to 3 has a total overlap on this 0 to 3. So what we do is, we stop at this point. What we're going to do is, we're going to update this value by this much. So this becomes 2. Minus 1 plus 3, so this becomes 2. Then what we're going to do is, not go any further. Remember, when lazy propagation was not in place, we went all the way till the leaf. Here, we're just going to stop here. Instead of going down, what we're going to say is, update the corresponding child in the lazy tree to for the lazy propagation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment this by 3 so this becomes 3 and this becomes 3. So what it is saying is till this point everything is up to date and I've updated these two guys to 3 it means that everything below this is not up to date and we will bring it up to date if required. At this point I don't need to. So then I go back up and then I go on the right side. This 1 is up to date because this value is 0. Also 0 to 3 does not overlap at all with 4 to 7. So we, we go back here and 
Then we take minimum of 2 and 1, and that is 1. So we update this value here. So this is 1. So at this point, if there was a query, what is the minimum? Give me the minimum from 0 to 3. We would come here, and then we would come here, and there would be a total overlap. So we would return 2, and this I would return max, and so we will return 2. So what I'm saying is, if we do not affect the correctness of the operation using lazy or uh, using uh, lazy propagation. Basically, we have we are not propagating the value yet, and if required, we'll propagate in the future. So let's say have another operation increment 0 to 3 by 1. So again, we start from here. This one is totally up to date because this value is 0. So we go both on left and right side because 0 to 7 and 0 to 3 has a partial overlap. This 0 to 3 is this value 2 is totally up, up to date because this value is 0. Also, this 0 to 3 has a total overlap on this 0 to 3. So what we're going to do is we're just going to increment this by 1. So this becomes 3. Then, since it's a total overlap, we stop at that point. Since it's an internal load, we update its child in the lazy tree to, to be incremented by 1. So this becomes 4 and this becomes 4. So as you can see, we are accumulating the updates at this point here, but not pushing it down. And that's an optimization. If we had not done this, we would have pushed this update 3 and 1 all the way to the leaf. And we don't have to do it yet because there is no need for that. And that's why the term lazy. Then we go back here. Then we go back, we go on the right side. One is totally up to date because uh, this guy is zero. Four to seven does not overlap with zero to three. So we, this guy returns three, this guy returns once. The minimum of one and three is one. So it just doesn't change. So our next operation is increment 0 to 0 by 2, basically saying increment this guy by 2. So again we start from here, this guy is up to date because this value is 0. 0 to 0 and 0 to 7 has partial overlap, so we go both on left and right side. 0 to 3 and 0 to this guy is up to date because this value is 0. Also 0 to 3 and 0 to 0 have partial overlap, so we go both on left and right side. So we reach this point here. So first thing we notice is this value is not up to date because this value is not zero. It means that there were updates from the last operation which have not been propagated yet to this node. So what we're going to do is we're going to first update this node to the latest value. So we add four to this point. So this becomes three. Then this 4 is taken care of, but its children are not. So what we're going to do is we're going to propagate this 4 to its children. So this becomes 4. This becomes 4. And we are updating this value to 0, indicating that I have propagated at this point and my children needs more propagation. Then 0 to 1 and 0 to 0 have partial overlap. So we continue to go down we reach this guy minus 1, minus 1 and 4, uh, uh, so minus, since this value is 4, it means that there is some value that needs to be propagated here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 4 to minus 1, so this becomes 3. Remember, this, this, three, this 4 is coming from the previous two updates, we have not yet applied this 2. And then we'll make this guy 0, indicating that we have done the propagation. Then, for the current operation, we are going to increment it by 2, so this becomes 5. And then, we are going to go back up here, and then go on the right side, and this 2, this value is not 4, this value is not 0, so we got to increment this by 4, so this becomes 6. And since the propagation is done, this becomes 0. And then 1 to 1 does not overlap with 0 to 0, so we change, we do not do this increment of 2 here. Then we return minimum of 5 and 6, which is 5, so this guy becomes 5. And then on the right side, and then we go on the right side, in here, this value is also uh, needs propagation because this value is non zero. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase it by 5, 4, so this becomes 5. And then this is taken care of, but its children are not. So we're going to pass this 4 down. 
and make this guy 0. At this point, 2 to 3 does not have an overlap with 0 to 0, so we do nothing. And then we take minimum of 5 and 5, so that's 5. So this guy becomes 5. And then we go on the top, and then we go on the right side. 1 is totally up to it because this value is 0. Also, 4 and 7 does not overlap with 0 to 0, so we change nothing. And then minimum of 5 and 1 is 1. So you see how when we had to update, we went in, we went down, and when we went down all the way to the leaf nodes and actually propagated the past values. So remember this value was minus 1, and after these three increments, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 2, 6, minus 1 plus 6 is 5. So this value, when needed, actually got the, all the updates. Next, let's do a query of minimum from 3 to 5, saying, what is the minimum from 3 to 5? So again, we start from the root node. This guy is totally up to date because this value is 0. Also, 3 to 5 has partial overlap with 0 to 7, so we go on both left and right side. In here, uh, this value is totally up to date because this value is 0. Also, 3 to 5 has partial overlap with 0 to 3, so we come on left side first. This 5 is totally up to date because this value is 0. Also, 0 to 1 has no overlap with 3 to 5, so we return max from here. Then we go on the right side. This 5 is totally up to date because this value is 0. Also, 3 to 5 has partial overlap with 2 to 3, so we go on the left side first. So this value here, 4. So you can see that this value 4 is not 0. It means that there were updates from the past which has not been applied here. So let's first apply that. So this value becomes 4 plus 4, 8. And also let's make this guy 0. Now, 2 to 2 has no uh, 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 overlap with 3 to 5. So this guy returns a max. And then we go on the right side. Again, value here is not totally up to date because this value is uh, non-zero. So let's first add it here. So this becomes 5 and this becomes 0. And then this guy is 3 is uh, totally under 3 to 5. So this guy is going to return 5. Ma minimum of max and 5 is 5. So we are going to return 5 from here and max from here. Minimum of max and 5 is 5, so from, the, from this set we are going to return 5. Then uh, we go on the right side. So 4 to 7 have a partial overlap with 3 to 5, so we go on the left side first. 4 to 5, uh, this guy is totally up to date because this value is 0. 4 to 5 has total overlap, 3 to 5 totally overlaps 4 to 5. So we stop at that point and just return 1 from here. And on the right side, 2 is totally up to date because this guy is 0. And 3 to 5 does not at all overlap with 6, uh, 6, 7. So this returns max. And then minimum of max and 1 is 1. And then minimum of 1 and 5 is 1. So this query will return 1, which is the minimum from 3 to 5, this 1. So as you can see, even the query operation goes in and updates the uh, propagates the lazy propagation value if needed. So both update and query will update the values if needed. So in the next section, let's look at the code. First, let's look at the code for updating segment 3 lazily. So here I have an array of uh, length 4, 2, 3, minus 1, and 4. So I have a minimum segment 3 for this array. This is a conceptual diagram of that segment 3. Well, this segment 3 is really represented as an array. And then I take another array of the same length uh, as the segment tree array and uh, it's all initialized with zero. So we're going to perform three operations, increment, increment, and query. So let's start with the first increment. So I'm saying increment uh, everything in the range zero to three by two. So we call this function update segment tree range lazy. Segment tree is this tree, lazy is this array. Uh, start range is zero, end range is three, delta is this two. Uh, low is 0, high is 3, and position is 0. If low is greater, it only happens when we are uh, crossing the boundary of an array. So at this point, it doesn't happen. 
Then we check is the value at position zero, basically the root, is the root uh, up to date? Is there any uh, propagation from uh, the past update that needs to be updated? And at this point there is none because this is the first update we have. So we don't go into this if condition. So then we have either no overlap, total overlap or partial overlap. In this case we have a total overlap because my start range is zero, low is zero, end range is three, high is three. So basically my uh, my range start and end range is totally overlapping low and high so what I do is I uh, I increment my segment 3 position by delta so basically I'm at the root right now which position is 0 so I increment my root by 2 so this value here becomes uh, minus 1 plus 2 which is 1 let's also update our conceptual tree so this becomes 2 1 then uh, what we're going to do is, we, since this is an internal load, since low is not high, what we're going to do is we're going to update its children in the lazy tree to this value. So basically, in this lazy, the children of 0 is 1 and 2 because of 2i plus 2 into position plus 1 and 2 into position plus 2. So we go here and we up increment these values by 2 and then return. So basically what we did was we did not increment, uh, we did not change any other value in the segment tree but just updated the lazy tree and if needed in future we can get the value from this lazy uh, lazy tree and update our actual segment tree. So next we have operation increment 2, 2 by 4. Basically saying increment the uh, array element at index 2 by 4. So we call update uh, segment tree lazy segment tree is this array, lazy is this array, my start range is 2, my end range is 2, my delta is 4, low is 0, high is 3 and position is 0. Again we don't go into this if condition so we come here if lazy into pos uh, position is not equal to 0 basically saying are all the values at root propagated so lazy, pos uh, lazy at 0 is 0 so we don't go into this if condition then we check uh, no overlap, total overlap or partial overlap. In this case we will have a partial overlap. So we don't go into these two if conditions but we come here. So we calculate mid, the mid is going to be 0 plus 3 by 2 so it's going to be 1. So then we go into the recursion, so left side. So we come right here at this 2 or in here at this 2. So again low is not going to be greater than high. So at this point lazy position is not equal to 0. So lazy position actually is not equal to 0 because the value at uh, this 1 is 2. So basically there was a value from before which had not been propagated so let's first propagate it. So what we're going to do is segment position plus equal to lazy position. So what this means is in here we are going to increment this by the, this value which is 2. So this really becomes 4 and in here this really becomes 4 and then we are going to update its child for lazy propagation so once child is uh, 2 into 1 plus 1 so that's uh, 3 and so what we're going to do is we're going to mark this guy for lazy so this becomes 2 and then its right child one's right child which is this guy in this lazy so we mark this guy to be uh, for lazy and then we update this guy to be 0 saying that I have propagated the value at this position. Then we check uh, at this is uh, how our high uh, here our uh, low is 0 our high is 1 and we were saying that increment in 2 by 2 comma 2 so there is no overlap here so basically we go back from here to this guy and on the right side so we go back in recursion and then we go on the right side here so again we come here at this time our uh, start range is 2 end range is 2 low is uh, uh, low is 2 and high is 3 so again we don't go into this if condition again at position 2 at this position this value has not been propagated because this guy is not uh, 0 so what we're going to do is we're going to first propagate this value so minus 1 plus 2 so this becomes uh, 1 basically this becomes 1 and then we're going to update its children so basically saying that 5 is the left child of 2 increment that by 2 
and then write char of 2 and this value becomes 0 indicating that I have propagated the values. So then uh, we check uh, is there a partial overlap or total overlap or no overlap. So in this case uh, we have a partial overlap because our range is uh, 2 comma 2 and our low is uh, 2 and high is 3. So then we calculate a new mid. New mid this time is going to be 2. We go on the left side first. So in so here we come on the left side right at this point. Here my lazy position is again not zero because uh, my this value here is five. And my position is five, so this value is not zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first update it. So this value becomes uh, minus one plus two is one. So this is this is all these changes we are doing for the first iteration like the the first increment because we had not propagated that value before and since it has no other children this we mark at zero and then we at this point we have a total overlap so what we're going to do is we're going to increment this value by delta remember this change we did was for the last increment and now we're going to take care of this increment so we're going to increment this by four so this becomes five so basically uh, this value becomes 5 and then we are going to return and then we are so we go back to the point where we were at this position and then we go on the right side so on the right side also we hit this uh, lazy position is not equal to 0 so we increment this by 2 so this becomes 6 and this becomes 0 and this becomes 6 and then uh, and then we'll have uh, no overlap because our start range is 2 end range is 2 while my high low is 3 and high is 3 so we are not going to increment uh, this uh, this guy by 4 so it returns so at this point we're just going to update our segment 3 with the minimum of 5 or 6 so that's 5 so this value becomes 5 so basically this value becomes 5 and at the top we are going to see minimum of 4 and 5 so this value becomes 4 and this value also becomes 4 so this is what happened so we first we incremented uh, 0 in the range 0 to 3 and then in the next time we just incremented in the range 2 to 2 by 4 and this changed our segment tree so next let's look at how do we do the query look at the range minimum query which is not very different from uh, the regular range query so uh, so what we have is query the minimum from 1 to 2 basically asking what is the minimum between from 1 to 2 so my segment uh, tree is this tree my lazy is this uh, this array my q low is uh, one my q high is two my low initially is zero my high is three my position is zero notice how in this lazy uh, lazy array only the values at three and four have not been propagated because they are at they are non-zero values while all uh, while rest of the values have been propagated so uh, so we come here uh, we don't go into this if condition uh, value at root has been propagated because this value is zero so we don't go into this if condition. Uh, we check for no overlap. So at this point, there is a partial overlap uh, from uh, one to two and uh, zero to three. So what we do is we get the mid and we go both on the left and the right side. So let's first go on the left side. So we go again top in the recursion at the top of this uh, function. Again, this is not true. So we don't go into this if condition. So the value at four, uh, the value at uh, position one, which is this guy, has been totally propagated with, because the value at one is zero. So we don't go into this if condition. Then we check uh, no overlap. So here my low is uh, zero and my high is one. So we, we have again have a partial overlap. So we again go on the left side. So we come here. So basically we are at this point now where the position is 0, 1, 2, 3. So we come here and at this point 
my position uh, my lazy position my lazy at two is not zero it is lazy at three is not zero it's two so basically we need to first propagate this value so what we do is we update our segment three increment by two so uh, we increment this value by two so this becomes four and this becomes four and this becomes zero it doesn't have any children so we don't go into this if condition and then we mark it as zero saying that we have propagated this value then at this point there is no overlap because my uh, high is uh, my low high is zero zero and my query is uh, one to two so we go into the no overlap and return a really big number from here so we return a max from here then uh, we go on the right side we go back in recursion and then go on the right side so we come here so uh, here my position is going to be one two three four uh, zero one two three four so this value is not zero so we are going to first uh, uh, fix first uh, uh, fix the uh, propagation so we are going to increment the value by uh, two so this value becomes five and this value becomes zero then uh, then what we're going to do is uh, uh, we check no so there is uh, we don't go into this if condition at this point there is a total overlap so what we're going to do is we're going to return 5 from here so we are going to return 5 from here and then we go back in recursion so we return a max of uh, max of uh, 5 and uh, minimum of max and 5 so that's 5 so we get 5 from left side then we go on the right side and on the right side uh, we get uh, position 0 1 2 and 2 is totally propagated because this value is 0 here so we don't go into this if condition then we have a partial overlap so we go on the left side first so we reach this point and the position here is going to be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and the 5 is also propagated correctly so we don't go into this if condition we have a total overlap so this guy also returns 5 from its left side and then we go on the right side and right side is also propagated but it returns uh, but it is out of range so there is no overlap so we get a max from here so then we return 5 from here and then at this point we do a minimum of 5 and 5 which is 5 so that is our answer so the so the minimum from uh, 1 to 2 is 5 so uh, what are the applications of segmentary segmentary is uh, really useful in the cases where you have a really big tree and you have lots and lots of uh, update query where and that's where segmentary can be uh, that's where lazy propagation can be really really be useful so this is all i have to talk about lazy propagation in segmentary uh, please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, check out my github page at github.com mission piece interview wiki, subscribe my youtube channel, like my facebook page. Also the link to the code is in the description section of the video. Thanks again for watching this video.